use Taylor's theorem to compute the cubic approximation to f of x, y equal to y cosine x plus y at the point zero, zero. So how does Taylor's theorem work? So we're looking for the coefficient of x to the m, y to the n, and some Taylor polynomial. What do I want to do? First, we're going to compute partial derivative. Okay, it's going to be m times an x, y times an n, and then I'm going to evaluate at our point, 0, 0. Next, we take the number that comes out of 1, I divide by m factorial, n factorial. That's going to give us our coefficient. So our first step is going to be compute all the partial derivatives up to order 3. Let's work through our partials. So first, put our point in our function, since there's a y in front, 0 comes out. Do a partial with respect to x, so what are we going to do? Okay, the variable is x, we treat y as a constant. So the y in front I leave alone, now it's just the chain rule on cosine x plus y. Derivative of cosine is minus sine, put the x plus y back in, and then derivative of the inside with respect to x is going to be 1. So what comes out, it's going to be y minus sine x plus y, put our point in, get a 0. So we're going to collect all these terms in a column. Partial with respect to y, same idea. Only here, y is the variable, x gets treated as a constant. So here I need to do a product rule and then a chain rule. So the y, take that out, that leaves me with cosine x plus y. Then we'll have plus y times derivative of cosine x plus y with respect to y. Same idea, we'll get a minus sine x plus y. I put my zero, zero in, okay? We have a cosine x plus y, so I'm going to get a 1. Okay, cosine of 0 is equal to 1. All right, we continue like this. Thing to note, whenever we do the mixed partials, it doesn't matter what order you do them in. So for instance, if I wanted partial with respect to x and then y, I could get it from partial with respect to x by hitting that with partial with respect to y, or partial with respect to y by hitting it with partial with respect to x. You get the same answer. So as I work through, we're going to get lots of zeros. And then when we get to these terms where we have three partials, we'll start getting something interesting. Let's put things together. So partial of f with respect to y, we get a 1. So that means we're going to collect a y. OK, three partials with respect to y. We get a minus 3. So what do we do? Take our minus 3. We're going to have a y cubed divided by 3 factorial. 3 factorial is 6, so I get a minus y cubed over 2. OK, partials 1 and x, 2 and y. We get a minus 2. So we're going to have x times y squared. Then we're going to divide by 2 factorial, 1 factorial. OK, that's going to be. 2 and y, 1 and x. So what do we get? 2 factorial is 2, 1 factorial is 1, so we get a minus xy squared. Then we have 2 partials in x, 1 and y, so that's going to give me a minus 1. We hit that with an x squared y, and I divide again by 2 factorial, 1 factorial. That's going to give me minus x squared y over 2. We sum all these up, and that gives us our third Taylor polynomial. Now, we want to use this to approximate our function at point 0.1, point 0.1. So we stick point 0.1, point 0.1 into our polynomial. What comes out is 0 0.098. If I put point 0.1, point 0.1 into the calculator with our actual function, what comes out is going to be point 0.1 cosine of point 0.2. Okay, and that point 0.2 is in radians. What comes out now is going to be 0 0.100. So we see, we rounded this off, we would be in the ballpark. Now, let's check our work. So what can I check? Well, I know the Maclaurin series for cosine, that's going to be 1 minus x squared over 2 plus x to the fourth over 24, and so on. So I only want the first two terms. So what we're going to do is, where I see an x there, I'm going to put an x plus y, expand it, and then multiply by y. 
that should be close to what we got with our third Taylor polynomial. So we do so, I expand the x plus y squared, we divide by two, multiply everything by y, and you notice we get exactly our third Taylor polynomial.